O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Praise and thanks to God. This morning dawns, dear Savior, my praise and thanks I bring for your rich grace and favor. With songs of joy I sing, though seated on your throne, you still. The prophet Elijah, who we remember today, was the most famous prophet that worked in the northern tribes of Israel during the period of the divided kingdom. He is known for being taken up into heaven in a whirlwind with chariots and charioteers of fire, one of the two people that we know of that did not die but went straight to heaven along with Enoch. He is known for going to the widow who only had enough ingredients to make one more meal for her and her son and then she was going to die. He said, feed me anyway, and as long as he was there, the food didn't run out. And even though the boy died, Elijah was able to resurrect him from the dead. He's also famous for standing up to the prophets of Baal and saying that the true God, the one God, Yahweh, is better than your fake gods. And so on Mount Carmel, they had a showdown, and the showdown went like this. Uh, the prophets of Baal would make an altar, and Elijah would make an altar, and then they would put an animal on the altar, their respective altars, but they would not start the, start the fire. They would ask their, their divine being to start the fire, and the prophets of Baal prayed and prayed and prayed. They even cut themselves to show their God how serious they were but no fire came. Elijah has his altar doused with water. He calls on fire from Yahweh, and it comes, licks up the, licks up the water, burns up the, the sacrifice, the wood, and even the stones that made up the altar. But the message we should take from this is not simply that God is better than fake gods. We kind of already knew that. But the message we should take is that when Elijah comes down, he has to flee for his life, and he finds himself all alone, and he wonders if anybody in Israel even cares. The great big show was, yes, a very real manifestation of the truth of God's power and his existence. But that's not how people come to faith normally. Sure, there is evidence there, but God comes in different ways. And so here is maybe the message of Elijah and the story of Mount Carmel, that when Elijah, after his great so-called victory, finds himself all alone, God sends him this message. 
And the word of the Lord came to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broke down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel. And anoint Elisha son of Shaphat from Abel Meholah to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. The word of the Lord. A gentle whisper, wasn't it? It's the word of God. And so when you want a sign, when you want God to come down here with a big miracle, pray for it. He may do it. But remember, it's his word that he primarily wants to use to interact with you. Not the fire, not the wind, not the earthquake, but the gentle whisper that says, I love you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us safely to this new day. Defend us with your mighty power, and grant that this day we neither fall into sin nor run into any kind of danger. And in all we do, direct us to what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.